just thank you for this day, Lord. I hope we have a great day, and I hope the coronavirus goes away, and I hope we will all have good Sunday church, and I hope and I thank you for your son, Jesus. Amen. Hi, South Shores. I'm going to share with you one of my favorite verses. Psalm 40, verse 8. I desire to do your will, my God. Your law is within my heart. Good morning, South Shores kids and family, and welcome back to Kids Church. The announcements are still the same. VBS church registration has started. You guys have this Sunday and any time this week to stop by the church office and get kids registered for Vacation Bible School. Just a reminder, kids have to be four by June 1st to participate. Don't you lose your chance to get your spot. Open registration starts May 10th. All right, guys, I haven't seen Brian yet this morning, which usually by now I've at least seen him on campus, but I just, I don't know. Hey, oh, wait, hey, there he is. Can, 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 Hi, Brian. Have you seen what the story is this week? Well, yeah. You have? Yeah. This is my favorite. It's so incredible. It's really, really cool. What are you doing? Um, I'm filming announcements. This is usually the part where you're hiding from me, remember? Oh, yeah. Look him. All right, Brian. Well, even I can find you there, and I'm usually not very good at hide finding you. All right, guys, well, since Brian's hiding, I might as well intro worship this time. You all know what time it is. It's time to stand up and sing.
Brian, you can come out now. They're they're gone. Okay. So today's story. Yeah, you were telling me it's your favorite, but oh, why is it your favorite? I mean, it's 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 wind, fire, woo! I mean, three thousand people. It it oh, it's crazy. It's like which one of the coolest ones around? Okay, so I, I get that, but what's the story? Just have to watch and see. On the day of Pentecost, Jesus' disciples were gathered together in Jerusalem. All of a sudden. A sound came from heaven. It was like a strong rushing wind and it filled the whole house where Jesus' disciples were staying. Then tongues appeared like flames of fire and they rested on each of the disciples. The disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit gave them the ability to speak in languages they didn't even know. Now, Jews were in Jerusalem who had come from every nation. They heard the disciples' voices in their own languages, and they were amazed. How could the men from Galilee speak so many languages? Peter stood up and said, I'll tell you what's happening. He reminded the people of something the prophet Joel had said long ago. God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. I will show you wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Peter said, You saw the miracles, wonders, and signs God did through Jesus. Even though God planned for Jesus to die, you used lawless people to nail him to a cross and kill him. But death did not keep hold of Jesus. God raised Jesus from the dead. Then Peter said, You have seen the truth. Jesus is alive. He went up to heaven to be with God the Father. Do not doubt this. Peter continued, When you killed Jesus, you killed the Messiah. The Holy Spirit convinced the people that Peter was telling the truth. What must we do to be saved, they asked. Peter told the people to repent, to turn away from their sins and to turn to God. God will forgive your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Be baptized in the name of Jesus, he said. Everyone who believed Peter's message was baptized. 
that day, about 3,000 people joined Jesus' followers. They learned what Jesus' disciples taught, and they met with other believers every day. They broke bread together and prayed. God kept his promise to send the Holy Spirit. With the Holy Spirit's help, Jesus' disciples could begin their work to share the gospel with the entire world. God gives the Holy Spirit to everyone who trusts in Jesus as Lord and Savior. In our Bible story today, we were celebrating this day called Pentecost, when God poured out His Spirit on all the disciples. What an awesome day that must have been. And it makes me think of three things. First, it makes me think of God's provision, how He provides for us. He wasn't going to leave us here all alone. He left His Spirit for those that believe in Him to live inside of us. Second thing it makes me think of is how it was fulfilling all the ancient prophecies. Even Peter, when he was preaching, was quoting directly from Joel chapter 2. And third, it fulfills Jesus' promise because he told his disciples, I've got to go away, but I will send my spirit back to be with you. And they didn't understand it then, but they sure did after this day. Have a great day, kids. Wait, I'm sorry. We have questions from kids from the other pastor, Brian, and he's really changed his look. Check this out. Hi there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for questions from kids. What exactly is the Holy Spirit? How do we know if we have the Holy Spirit inside us? Dorian, that is a great question. And you know, it's one that many adults really don't understand as well. We're usually familiar with God the Father, of course, and and God the Son, Jesus. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, God the Spirit, many of us aren't quite sure who He is. And that's the one thing I would change about your question. What exactly is the Holy Spirit? Well, the Holy Spirit's a person. He's one of the three persons of the Trinity with God the Father and God the Son. So He is a who, not really a what. And so understanding that the Holy Spirit is is fully God is really important and that he's a person. He's real. Uh, He's not some kind of force or he's not some kind of, of thing that God uses to help us do what we need to do. He's a person. And so who is the Holy Spirit? Again, the Holy Spirit is fully God. And here's the wonderful thing. As we saw in this week's story, God promised to send the Holy Spirit and he's done that. The Holy Spirit is given to live in all of us who believe in Jesus. So if you have trusted in Jesus, the Holy Spirit has come to live within you. And that is a great gift that God has given us because here are some things the Holy Spirit does for us. He empowers us. He gives us the ability to live rightly for God, to obey God so we can please God. Uh, When we're going through difficult things, he gives us the power to endure. So that's a great, great thing the Holy Spirit does for us. The Holy Spirit also changes us. We know that God wants us to live differently. He wants us to look differently, to be different because we look and act more like Jesus. Well, that's not something we do. That's what the Holy Spirit does in us and through us. So he changes us to be more like Christ. And the Holy Spirit also comforts us. Life can be hard at times. And one of the great things about the Holy Spirit's ministry is that he provides comfort, peace in our minds, peace in our hearts, even when life is really difficult. And one other thing that the Holy Spirit does is he convicts us. So when we sin, when we do wrong, the Holy Spirit, one of the ministries he has for us is to let us know that we just did something wrong. And that's actually a kind gift from God because it enables us to confess that sin to God, to repent and enjoy right relationship with God again because we have put that sin behind us, because the Holy Spirit convicted us. So wonderful ministries the Holy Spirit does. Indeed, I hope you see the Holy Spirit is a tremendous gift to us. So here's a question back for you. What evidence of the Holy Spirit have you seen in yourself or in other Christians?
right, guys, that's another wrap for another Great Kids Church. We'll see you all next week. Bye.